Get ready, get ready. Keep watching for a second. Keep watching. I see him. I see him. Same place, right? Okay, here comes Kevin. Walk up to his beautiful second Newfoundland bull moose. And he's a nice one. Hey, think what that? an absolute beauty. Huh? Absolute beauty. My name's Kevin Weed. I come from Rhode Island to hunt a moose. It's always been my dream to, to get a nice moose. This is my first moose hunt ever. A friend of mine that's a, a trusted bear guide told me Dion Dix is the guy to go with. So here I am in Newfoundland, hoping to get a big one. Stay tuned. Kevin's quest for a big Newfoundland bull moose didn't end there. So he in the following year, he asked me if we could find a fly-in camp, a more remote camp, to try to look for a, a big bull. So even though there was plenty of big moose in where we were, you, you just wanted to try a backcountry fly-in, like a helicopter fly-in camp, just to try something different. So I knew of Arlock Outfitters, they had a good reputation, so I contacted Arlock and we arranged a early season, before the rifle season, a bow hunt. For Kevin. So plans is all made and we jumped aboard a chopper and headed into a camp called uh, Trophy Lake Camp. Sounded good? So I was really looking forward to it. Okay well this was the first time for me or Kevin to fly into Arlock Camp and uh, we really didn't know what to expect but what we did know was absolutely beautiful country. It was a great flight and nice looking camp from the air and uh, looked like the surroundings was great and we just couldn't wait to get started okay we're in Arlock first time for Kevin and first time for me so as we always do you're gonna try his bow to make sure that she's uh, in line and uh, ready to find that big boy go for it Kevin We done some adjustments to his bow and later that evening we decided to go for a walk. I had my GPS with me and I had a few places picked out on my maps uh, of places that I wanted to go check out. It looked like a good spot and uh, we walked I suppose a kilometer and a half, a little, maybe a little bit more and we come to a hilltop and on the other side was a valley of forests and open places and the first thing we seen was a beauty and uh, we were so excited just take a look at this but worst thing we couldn't touch them not till the next morning This thing had a very unique set of antlers, lots of character, and of course still covered in velvet because it's early, early season. And here he was now like maybe 150 yards away from us, and we could just, all we could do is just look at him. It was heartbreaking, and we knew that the forecast, the forecast wouldn't promise them to be a very good week at all. We had a little window tomorrow morning, first thing in the morning, and uh, if this bull was going to be in the same place, we had a good chance, a real good chance, to put a stock on them, and uh, I don't see why we couldn't get them. Just couldn't wait for the more morning to come. The next morning was beautiful, and of course we were on our way back, straight back to where we seen that, that big bull. Okay, we see the big bull we seen last night. See if we can get a shot at him. I think Kevin's gonna do it this time. First chance. Yeah, he's a beauty.
Well, now he even looked more majestic. All the velvet hanging off, and he was just strutting down across the open country, uh, kind of walking away, but we weren't even trying to call yet. And uh, when, he, when he stopped there, I got ready and done a little bit of scraping and grunting, and all of a sudden he turned around and started coming straight back toward us. He would come so far and uh, then he would stop and scrape his antlers on the trees. We could hear him and see him. It was just it was just awesome to watch. Well boys, that was uh, all the good news. I don't think you're ready for the bad news, but uh, we closed the distance between this moose and us and we were like no more than 75 yards away I guess. And I could just could see his antlers over the top of the trees and he was grunting, grunting and scraping as he was coming closer and closer to confront us. And we had to make a little bit of a detour around a, around a little bunch of woods, uh, which was perfectly downwind of him. And anyway, to make a long story short, when we got around, there was no moose to be found. And I have no clue for sure exactly what happened. I can speculate but I, but I don't know for sure and it was disappointing. Okay here's a layout of the land I got off Google Earth of the area that we were after that moose. So me and Kevin was standing right here and the moose was across this valley right here and th this is a big valley actually it comes all the ways around this. This is a high knob here we would call it. So when we got right here, we looked over and seen the moose. We checked the wind and it felt like it was blowing from this direction, you know, blowing up across here. So I don't know if if truly the wind was actually blowing this way or was it just blowing, felt like it was blowing this way because this hill was blocking the true direction of, of the wind, which might have been this way, you know, because when you're down over the back of, one, of a hill, you really can't tell not 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 perfectly which way the wind is really blowing so i really felt like the wind was blowing here up across here so you know we were good here so our scent was blowing this way so our plan was i started calling and the moose turned around and i started to come back heading back toward us as soon as we seen it start to come back we took off <laughs> running almost because it's really really good walking down across here heading across and our plan was to go all the way around and like get here somewhere and we were on the other by this time we would be on the other side of this valley so we look back down and see where the moose was so by the time we got right here somewhere that I felt the wind blowing because we were uh, getting away from this hill I felt the wind blowing this direction and I said oh man I don't know if the if, if, the, if the wind is really like I thought, I thought it was coming this way, you know. So, and every now and then the wind would swirl, it would feel like it was swirling this way somewhere. And I was just getting a little bit nervous because that's the moose coming across this way, walking this way. That's about, that's about la roughly the last place I heard him was like down there somewhere, and we were up here. So, I don't know if... If the wind swirled, swirled enough, or this hill was just a hindrance to us, it, it was good for elevation, but it really blocked the true direction of, of what we thought the wind was blowing. So I don't know if, if the wind kind of blew down this way as we were down here somewhere, and he smelled us, because by the time we got over like there somewhere, we started looking down this valley again, expecting the moose to be here somewhere. There was no moose to be found. And we done everything. I got up on all the little knobs there, looking back, covered this valley completely, and there was no moose. So I walked, even walked back, and got up on the high land and looked back down, and there was no moose to be seen. So I don't know. I don't know if uh, if he if he smelled us somewhere along here. It was just bad luck. That's all because it was lucky for him, very lucky because it was just a fluke that he actually smelled us. But I don't know. That's, that's the best way I can describe what I, I think that might have happened. The area was a great spot, but we just, for that first few hours of Monday morning, and, well, Sunday evening as well, we had that little window of to, to see 
some distance because it was before the rut so you couldn't do any calling so we, had, we were depending on our site first to see one then do a spot and stock but I mean once it's foggy you couldn't see a thing and uh, yeah we went all week and we couldn't see a thing when uh, Saturday came Saturday morning the fog lift and it was absolutely gorgeous on our flyout. Hey guys, uh, I hope you're enjoying the video so far, uh, but uh, just a reminder uh, about this uh, free moose hunt in Newfoundland that I got up for grabs. Uh, it's still available and uh, uh, don't uh, let this chance slip, slip away. Uh, DVD sales are going great, but there's still some left. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, contest, uh, that once 600 videos are sold, and then I'll do the draw. So. Uh, Send me an email at uh, enlmoosehunt at hotmail.com and I'll explain to you just uh, just how to uh, take part in this uh, free moose hunt. So, yeah, just purchase a DVD and, and your name gets entered. So, uh, looking forward to hearing from you and uh, let's get back to the video and uh, I hope you enjoy the, the rest of the show. Well, Kevin's quest for a trophy Newfoundland moose is still ongoing. Uh, Kevin came back the following fall and you know, hung with uh, the outfitter that I always guide for, Black Ridge Outfitters. It was a late season moose hunt, so we knew the, the risk that was involved. With a late season, not because of uh, you know bad, miserable bad weather, but we took the chance. And if I remember right, I think it was the first day off. It was uh, wasn't a wasn't a good day. It was slop, snow, and high wind, and. We were just basically killing time and we drove in over a wood road and I was in the pan of the truck and Kevin was driving and I noticed a set of fresh moose tracks in the road so I got Kevin stopped and I took a look at the tracks and obviously it was really fresh and they were walking in the road in the direction we were going so we shut the truck off and decided to walk in behind the tracks follow them to see if we can sneak up on the moose but we had no hopes that was ever going to happen. So every little bank we came to, little hill we come to, we would stop and look ahead and get up and look. I couldn't, didn't see the moose. But we didn't go no more than 200 yards from the truck. And here it was the moose there, further in the road, off on the side, about 175 yards away. So we had to make some quick decisions and uh, Kevin decided that forget it he was going to take him with his rifle and his plans for getting a trophy bull with his, with his bow and arrow would have to we'll have to wait so here's the footage I got of Kevin shooting with his with his rifle Get ready, get ready. Just keep watching for a second. Keep watching. I see him, I see him. Same place, right? Come this way. See him right there, look. He went down, I think. Thank you, Dion. Oh. You are the absolute best at what you do. It's a, not sure how big, but it's a good bull. Good yeah. nice boards. Yeah, yeah. I see him when he come over that way. Yeah. Not the greatest video, but we had no choice how scared he's gonna run away, so. Okay, here comes Kevin. Walk up to his beautiful second Newfoundland bull moose. And he's a nice one. Think, buddy? What a beauty. Huh? Beyond. Get on the other side if you can. Yeah. 
Stuck in the stump? Yeah. I'll break him. Lift him up, yeah, turn him. You should be able to lift, lift and twist. You wind it. There you go. Hey, what that. an absolute beauty. Huh? Absolute beauty. How many points? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, I said that. So symmetrical. Yeah. Identical antlers on both sides. Yeah, he busted up. Plus, here, plus right? tough one up, yeah. Yeah. That's just a bit of character. <laughs> Well, it's not a real nice day. It's a little better than it was this morning, but uh, we weren't really expecting to get anything this morning. To tell you the truth, it's too, too dirty and windy. Got a little bit lucky, but it's all right. Happy? Yes, absolutely. That's Thank the main you, thing. Next year, we're going to even get a bigger one with his bow. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, got to go back to the truck and uh, get the bike and... Uh, Knives and uh, come in and take care of them. Congratulations. Thank you, Dion.